So thank you for attending this short session. This is uh, another clip in our Butterfly IQ series in critical care echocardiography. This particular one, how to use the Butterfly IQ to determine ejection fraction. And in this particular method, we're gonna look at the using the mitral annulus plane systolic exertion or MAPSI to do so. I'm Christopher Viscopoulos and I'm part of Medical Specialist Associates. So the first item is, is that in order to get a MAPSI, we need an apical four chamber view. And here we see a typical apical four chamber view. And what I wanna to bring to your attention is, is that what we wanna make sure is in plane and in view is the mitral annulus, which is right here. So I'm gonna show it again, the mitral annulus, which is right here. Now, ideally what you would like is you'd like this lined up as perpendicular as possible, but within 20%, which is common, um, is, uh, is equally accessible. And then once you have this particular view, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to put our M mode on. And so here we see down here our M mode is on and we have that ultrasound beam, single plane coming straight down through the mitral annulus. And what's going to happen? The mitral annulus is going to beat and it's going to contract towards and then pull away, contract towards and pull away. And here we see this up here with the M mode tracing. We see away towards, away towards, away towards. And then what we want to do is we just want to quantify how much away and how much towards we get. So we take our calipers and we start here in the trough and we measure up here to the peak right here. And for this particular measurement here, we see a measurement of 1.42 centimeters. So now the question is, is what do we do with this information? Well, we can use this information um, to quantify ejection fraction. And here I, I show you three different methods on how to do this. And so the first one here to get ejection fraction is by Jensen. Oh, my son, is by Jensen. And this is just simply MAPSI times, uh, in millimeters, times five. So what I do here is I take my centimeters, 1.42, I convert it into millimeters, 14.2 millimeters, times five, 71%. So another equation, and this is by Willenhammer, is we can use 2.9 times the MAPSI in millimeters plus 15. Let's go ahead and plug in our numbers to this one. So here we convert our centimeters into millimeters again, times by 2.9 plus 15, we get 56.18. So what's an important thing to note here? These are estimations, and you can see that both of these are normal EFs, but that there is a spread of about 15 between them. So perhaps maybe a simpler way is why using the equation, you can just take the raw value um, of, uh, of the MAPSI in millimeters itself. And this comes out of this textbook down here. And here we can see a MAPSI that is 11 or greater is normal. A MAPSI that's between nine and 10 is mildly abnormal. MAPSI between 6.5 and eight is moderately abnormal. And a MAPSI below 6.5 is severely abnormal. So there are positives and negatives to anything. Um, uh, in particular for, for MAPSIs, what are some of the positives and what are those negatives? So the positives are is that it's usually easy to obtain an apical four chamber view. So we should usually be able to get this. Um, and then the nice part is, is that it's easy to reproduce in the ICU. We can trend patients if we're seeing if their cardiac function is recovering, if we're seeing how they're responding to ionotropes. Um, and the nice part is, is that you don't have to have the best for, uh, apical four chamber view. You can have a rather not so good apical four chamber view, but you have some idea of where the mitral annulus is. And as long as you can use that particular M mode there, then you can use this, uh, you can use MAPSI. So then what are some of the negatives? Well, can't get an apical four chamber view in everybody. Maybe some people you only can get a subcostal view, can't use the MAPSI in that particular instance. It's not reliable in AV desynchronization or left bundle branch block. It's not reliable in significant diastolic dysfunction. Think of stage three, but yeah, really especially stage four diastolic dysfunction. Remember that it only shows the heart in one particular plane in an apical four chamber view of it. So it only shows that longitudinal shortening. And then it's not reliable in regional wall motion, uh, regional wall motion abnormalities um, for similar reasons that you're only really seeing it in one particular plane and that contraction in that one particular plane, and if you have regional wall motion abnormalities, you're not getting the, maybe the full picture of what the ejection fraction is. So thank you for watching, and please send feedback to the email address listed there.